So welcome to the video. So in this video we are going to solve another uh, weighted average cost of capital. So this question has been asked in December 2017. So we look at how this question works. So they are asking us calculate the after tax weighted average cost of capital of TCO on a market value basis. So that's what they are asking. We look at like what are the things that have been have that have to be found out. The following SOFP information relates to Tufaco, a company listed on a large stock market which pays corporation tax at a rate of 30%. And this is their share capital. This is the nominal values. They have retained earnings. They have non-current liability, which is uh, long-term borrowings. Then they have current liabilities, then total liabilities. So what are the long-term sources of finance? Share capital and long-term borrowings are the two uh, long-term finance. So the share capital of the company, this 17 million is split into consists of 12 million of ordinary shares and 5 million of irredeemable preference shares. So this 17 is like broken up into 12 and 15. And they also say the ordinary shares of Tufaco have a nominal value of 50 cents per share and X dividend market price of 7.07 .07 per share and a come dividend market price of 7.52 so they have given us uh, the come price and the x price and the dividend for 2007 will be paid in the near future so they are saying that the dividend will be paid, paid in the near future dividends paid in recent years have been followed so from 2006 to 2003 they have given so 2007 dividend they have not given i think we have to find it out the 5% preference shares of Tufaco have a nominal value of $0.5 per share and an X dividend market price of $0.31 per share. So we have the market value also. The long term borrowings of Tufaco consists of 10 million loan notes and a 3 million bank loan. So this 13 is like broken up into 10 million of bank loan notes and 3 million of uh, bank loans. The bank loan has a variable interest rate. So as the bank loan has a variable interest rate, we can say that it is a it is a short term finance. So we don't need to consider this 3 million while calculating the um, VAC. The 7% loan notes have a normal value of 100 per loan note and a market price of 102.3. Annual interest has just been paid and the loan notes are redeemable in 4 years time at a 5% premium to the nominal value. So we have all the information that is required to work out the sum. So we'll start. So requirement A, there's only one single requirement here. And we'll start with the market market value weighted average cost of capital. So we need to do a table for it. So I have already done a table. So we'll take that. Okay. So we'll have uh, the amount of uh, loan and this will be in million. And we have a working note and we have proportion of that uh, capital so that we'll work it out and we have the cost of the capital and we have so cost would usually be in a percentage then we have a working note and we multiply the proportion and the cost together and we'll get this so that's about the table here we'll start with the working notes So in working notes, we'll start with the value of uh, equity. So for value of equity, we have to find out the number of shares. Then we will find out the val the market price per share. So then we'll directly get the value of equity. We can get the value of equity. So the number of shares would be like equaling. Uh, there are like totally 17 million out of that 1 million is the nominal value of shares. But each share has a nominal value of 0 0.5. So this will give us the number of shares. So the number of shares is 20 million. 
and what's the market price per share the market price is the x dividend market price so that is 7.07 .07 per share so if you multiply both we will get the value so it's 169.7 we can take that number 169.68 so we got our equity value so in the same way we will also find out the value for value of the second one which is the irredeemable preference share so we will take it as irredeemable preference share so we will work it out i think in the same way we'll, we'll work it out so first we have to find out the value the total nominal value is 5 million and each irredeemable share is having a value nominal value of 0 0.5 and the x dividend market price of 0 0.31 so it is like uh, the same this calculation so we'll work out that irredeemable preference share value we have to find out so we'll quickly find it out so this number would be 5 million divided by the worth is 0 0.5 per share it's given here 0 0.5 per share so this is num the million of shares each share is worth 0 0.31 So, so the value of irredeemable preference share comes to 3.1 and finally we have to find out the value of the loan notes loan notes okay so what would be the value of loan notes here that's like very straightforward to find it out so what we'll do is we don't need to find out how many bonds are there so first we'll get the nominal value the nominal value of the bond is 10 million loan notes so first we'll take that 10 million loan notes divided by the nominal value per loan note that's 100 into the market price the market price is 102.34 2.34 so now we'll get the value the value comes to again this is in million so it comes to all these are in million only okay it comes to 10.234 so we'll enter that number 10.234 so we have got all the numbers so this is working note number one two and three so we'll go to the calculation of the numbers of the cost so the fourth one would be the ke so we'll find out ke so ke there are like two methods to find we are not sure like which method they have asking us if you look at this problem there is no capm information which is given here so there's no rm rf or beta so capm method cannot be done so we can work out through dividend uh, formula so there's also growth in dividend so we'll take the growth in dividend formula and we'll try to work it out so what's the formula it's d0 into 1 plus g 1 plus g divided by p0 the whole of this the whole of this should be added with g okay so that's how it works so we'll get each of these numbers individually first we'll try to get a d0 so d0 is equal to so d0 is equal to what is the dividend which is like currently paid the dividend that has been currently paid is the difference between these two numbers okay so we have to work it out it will be 7.52 which is including the price including the dividend and x dividend is 7.07 .07, the price which excludes the dividend so that comes to 0 0.45 so d0 is 0 0.45 we got that we have to get uh, p0 let's see whether we get the p0 number so p0 is equal to the x dividend share price okay that is what we have to take and that comes to 7.07 .07. 
zero seven. So we got that too. And finally, we have to get get the G. The G is the growth dividend. So that is not available here, and that we have to find out. So how do we find out G? To find out G, there are two ways. Okay, G is growth in dividend. And there are two ways to find out. One is Gordon method, and the other one is the uh, historical growth rate method. We have to take the growth rate method, okay, or the CAGR method. So we have all that numbers like perfectly given. So what is the G? The formula for G works like this. So we have to take a uh, nth root, okay. We have to take nth root, or we can put like this: the latest dividend. The latest dividend divided by the oldest dividend. Okay, you get this answer. Once you get this answer, you have to take the power, power of one divided by n. So once you do that, you will get the g. So after you have done this, you have to convert this into a percentage. So minus one you put, you will get a percentage number. So we'll do this. So first we'll get the latest dividend. See the latest dividend is not 2006 dividend, which is 0.43. The latest dividend is the this dividend, okay, 0.45. So we'll take that. So it is 0.45 minus the oldest dividend is 0.37. Sorry, it's not minus. It's divide. It's divide by divide by 0.37. Three seven. Okay. Once this has been done, then we have to take a power. So the power works like this: one divided by n. So what is n? N in this formula is how many years are there? Three to four is one year. Four to five is second year. Five to six is third year. And six to two thousand seven. This is two thousand dividend. Seven dividend. So that is the fourth year. So one, two, three. And four, so take one by n is four here. So close the bracket, and you will get the answer. We have to put an equal symbol, and we will get the answer. So the answer comes to like this. From this answer, you have to deduct one. Okay, because the minus one is in the formula. Minus one, we will arrive at an answer of zero point zero five. Okay, we will arrive at that, or we can also tell it as five percent. Okay, so five percent is the G. So we can take that five percent of G here. Okay, we got a G. So now we will apply this these numbers to this formula, and we will try to find out the KE. So We'll work out the ke here, or we'll work out the ke here. So ke will be d zero, which is zero point four five into one plus g. One plus g will be one point zero five. We have to multiply that. Okay, divided by okay divided by p zero p zero is seven point zero seven. So we have to divide by this, and this entire answer we have to add the g. So first let's see whether we get the answer for this. Yes, we got. So we'll add the g at the end. So G at the end will be zero five percent. So zero point zero five. Okay, don't put it as five percent. You won't get the answer. Put it as zero point zero five. You will get the answer. So we will see, and that comes to zero point one two or or twelve percent. Okay. So K E is twelve. Person, okay. So we got our ke. So we take this ke and we put it here. Okay, is twelve. So next is to find out our kp. 
what is the formula for kp the formula works like dividend divided by market value so you can either do this in a single uh, share value or you can do it as a whole value whichever you have you can do it so first we will find out the value so it is a 5 million irredeemable preference share but we don't know what is the interest so interest is given here it's a 5 percent value on, on the normal value of 0 0.5 so dividend is declared on this only and we also have the share price so we'll work out so if you take the dividend is equal to we'll put here will be equaling five percent of the normal value the normal value is 0 0.5 so we'll get the answer here. So that is 0 point. Okay, it's 0 0.025 and we'll get the market value. So the market value will be, we got it here, it's 0 0.31. So we'll get the KP. So our KP will be numerator is this denominator is this and multiply by 100 you will get it as a multiplied by 100 you will get the answer it comes to 8.065 our ke if you look at our ke our ke has been like is actually this number so we'll so a K if you calculate it should be like coming to 11.7 percentage okay so this number is 11.7 it's not 12 so we'll work it out that's 11.7 so the next one is to find out the loan notes so that would be our kd so kd is after tax and it's after tax so if you look at here it is a redeemable loan note so if it's a redeemable loan note we have to find out irr we have no other choice so we have to have a format for it format we have already done a format we have already done a format we'll just paste it here so we have to get the cash flows so the cash flow is current market value so current market value of the bond is 102.34 so it is a negative number so the next one is interest after tax so the interest is we have to work it out interest is 7% on the loan note and the tax is 30% so we'll work it out interest is 7% into 1 minus 0 0.3 or 30 percent is the tax rate so we got 4.9 so 4.9 is the after tax interest so what is the redemption value redemption value is annual interest has just been paid and the loan notes are redeemable in four years time at a premium of five percent so the loan note is normal value is 100 and redemption at, is at five percent premium so it comes to 105 so the discount factor we will take it as 6% and 4% we will find it out. So if it is at 6% it will be 1. Okay, The discount value is 1. And for this 4.9 okay, this occurs for how many years? It occurs for the first year to the 4 years. Okay, It occurs for these many years. So we have to look at the table and get the numbers. So if we look for an annuity factor, annuity factor 6% for 4 years, it comes to 3.465. And the discount factor comes to for four years 0 0.792 okay and 
the annuity factor for 4% for 4 years it comes to 3.63. And the discount factor for 4% for 4 years comes to 0.855. So we have got all the numbers. Our job is to just multiply. Multiply the cash flow into the discount factor. You will get the answer. Copy paste, copy paste. Done. Again, cash flow into discount factor. You got the value. Again, copy paste, copy paste. You got it. So now we will find out the IRR. So the IRR formula works like this. It's a low discount factor. So 4 plus. Okay. So this 4 has to be added. 4 plus the NPV at the low discount factor. So it's 5.22. 5.22 divided by. Again, low discount factor 5.22 minus minus 2.2. Close the bracket. Again, close the bracket. So, once you have done, you will get an answer for this. This is multiplied and the difference between the discount factor. So, that will be 6 minus 4. Okay, so we'll solve it. So it's going to be 4. We'll solve this one. That comes to 0 0.4. So it's again into will be there. And this will be 2. So we'll solve these two numbers. So that will come to 0.4. Okay, so we have to add this number. With this, so that would be add this number and this number. So the answer comes to 5.4. So the KD after tax is 5.4. So we can use that number as our cost. So what's our working note number? Working note number 4, 5, and 6 were used. So first, now we'll find out the proportion. We have to get the sum. We got our sum. Now we have to get the proportion divided by 183. 183. So we got the numbers. We have to just again and again repeat it. So the total answer should come to 1. So, hopefully we got that. The answer comes to 1. And now we have to find out. We have to find out the market value VAC. So, multiply the proportion into the cost. That will give you the proportionate cost. Do the same for the next two items. And the market value of VAC will be the sum of these numbers so that comes to 11.2 percentage so we'll check the answer so that's right so that is the right answer 11.2 percent so this is how you have to work so find out the value of equity preference share and loan notes then find out the ke kp and the kd and you can work it out okay so that's about it so that's about this video we'll meet in the next video